presents this sports exclusive, the NIT, Ohio State versus Xavier University. This sports special is brought to you in part by Counter, your best corn insecticide for conservation tillage. Second season, you start all over. Whatever has happened in the past is just that, in the past, and you can regain a lot of pride, momentum, respect, call it what you want, but you got Xavier University tonight in the NIT. Well, Lonnie, there's no question about that. We're happy to be playing right now in a tournament, and we've got a tough game with the veteran Xavier team, and what the Buckeyes are going to have to do better than we've been doing recently is defend better and rebound better. If we can get those things done, then we're going to win some games in this tournament. If we can't, then we have your ball club and the fact they really like to run the ball, which uh, there again throws it back on that rebounding that you mentioned. Any adjustments you've made since the end of the Big Ten season to improve that rebounding so you can run better than Xavier? Well, we've worked on it, Lonnie, every day. I think uh, hopefully we'll match up a little better with Xavier than some of the people we've played recently, although we did rebound the ball fairly well in Bloomington. Uh, it's a great challenge for us, and I think our kids are excited about being playing, about just playing right now and having a chance to win some games. And we'd like to play with a lot of enthusiasm and do everything we can tonight to win a basketball game. You know, I would think the enthusiasm would be high tonight. How was it in practice this week? Was there a noticeable difference, or was it just like any other week? Lonnie, we had a few problems because of final exams. We had two young people, three young people, come down today. They had exams this morning. But uh, the, when we were there, the, we didn't practice long, but we did have good practice. Are they very disappointed that they're not in the NCAA, or have they forgotten that now and concentrating on what's ahead of them right now? Well, I think they accepted that fact a long time ago, Lonnie. I think they realized they're going to have to have 18, 19 wins to get in the NCAA tournament. And when we didn't get that, then we wanted to get into a tournament. And uh, I think they feel very good about having played their way in the NIT tournament, NIT tournament, being in the top half of the Big Ten. But right now, it's a new season, and we're representing the Big Ten, and we're representing the high state basketball. And these Xavier Musketeers would like nothing better than to, to beat Ohio State and Cincinnati. All right, thank you, Coach, and good luck tonight. Right. We'll be right back after this break, Ohio State and Xavier. All right, welcome to the Cincinnati Gardens. We're just about ready for tonight's starting lineups. So let's join PA announcer Kevin Gomer for the starting lineups, the Ohio State Buckeyes and Xavier Musketeers.
Batting at center for the Musketeers, a 6 eight senior from Newark, New Jersey, number 23, Jeff Jenkins. Starting at guard, a 6 three sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, number 15, Ralph Lee. And at the other guard for Xavier, a 6-6 six, six senior from Long Island City, New York, number 10, Victor Fleming. The Musketeers, coached by Bob Sack, assisted by Jim Chellis, Harry Crow, and Wayne Morgan, and the trainer is Jay Koffler. The officials for tonight's game from the Atlantic Ten Conference, Lou Moon. All right, we're just about ready to go. Eldon Miller, eighth year with Ohio State, and Bob Stack is fifth year with the Musketeers. Interesting story about Bob Stack, 70 and 72 here at Xavier overall, but 42 and 18 over the last two seasons, so he has turned this program around. Take a look at the season stats. Ohio State is 15 and 13 on the year. Of course, the Muskies hitting the 20 win mark for the second time in a row. There are 20 and 10. Both teams shooting right around the 50% mark. One thing Xavier's gonna do to the Buckeyes is throw a number of different looks at them defensively. You may not see the same defensive look two straight times down the floor from Xavier. Ohio State expected to open in a man-to-man. -man. Davey Jones gets the start tonight for Eldon Miller's crew. He'll be on the floor along with Ronnie Stokes, Troy Taylor, Clarence McGee in the middle, and of course the all Big Ten forward Tony Campbell. Take a look at the lineup for Xavier. Their leading scorer, Jeff Jenkins, will be in the middle. Dexter Bailey at one forward. Ralph Lee and Vic Fleming at the guards and John Shimko at the other. And here we go. Ohio State controlling the opening tap. Clarence McGee up top, Xavier opens in a man-to-man. -man. Tony Campbell working from up high. Campbell opens with a 10-footer, and Ohio State takes a 2-0 lead. Xavier 10-0 right here on their home floor this year. This is their first year on this floor. Last year they played at Schmidt Fieldhouse back on the Xavier campus. And you go back to there, they've won their last 26 straight home ball games. Jenkins comes up short. Gets the rebound. And Xavier pulls even two apiece. Ronnie Stokes working against Vic Fleming. He got a whistle underneath and a foul on Shimko pushing off. Tony Campbell up top with the foul underneath. Ohio State will take it out on the side. Ohio State coming in having lost their last four ball games, but with a great chance tonight to redeem themselves and show that they do belong in this select group of 20 game winners that have been selected into this NIT 47th annual tournament. Musketeers have now dropped into a zone. There they are changing their defensive looks. Taylor over the Stokes on the wing. Ronnie works in, has to bring it back out. David Jones under the chart. Tony Campbell, who is fouled underneath. I'm Lonnie Haskins, about to be joined by John Gordon here at Corkside as John's plane has just landed. There you see Tony Campbell fouled underneath. Campbell with a chance to put the Bucks up for the second time tonight. Welcome to Cincinnati Gardens, John Gordon. Well, Lonnie Haskins, good to see you once again. How you doing? Not too bad. <laughs> Bucks have just taken a 3-2 lead and settle on in here. All right.
first time these two clubs have met since back in 1934. The Buckeyes owning a 2-0 advantage over Xavier. Of course, Xavier with a great opportunity tonight. One of the schools in Ohio that has waited a long time to get a shot at the University in Ohio. And apparently they're not going to call it a shooting foul, and so Xavier will take it out under their own bucket. Lee looking inside for Vic Fleming, posting up on Ronnie Stokes to bring it back up top and set it up. Ohio State in a man-to-man. -man. Buckeyes lead it 4-2. Dexter Bailey on the side underneath the Vic Fleming. Toy Taylor rips down the rebound and is called for traveling. Troy a little bit off balance. Pulling down there, a rebound, took one too many steps from Xavier again under their own basket with another opportunity to pull even at four. Jeff Jenkins baseline drive, wide open. And the Musketeers leading score, even discounted four apiece. Ronnie Stokes back up the other way quickly as Xavier back into a man-to-man -man this time down the floor. Davy Jones being hounded by Dexter Bailey. He's one of their defensive stalwarts. Ronnie Stokes from 20, goes 19. Rebound pulled down by Bailey. We got a foul. It's going to go against Bailey. And with that, Dexter Bailey will take a seat on the bench. Walter McBride in. Walter McBride, one of several players from right here in Cincinnati. Inbounds play goes to Clarence McGee and heavy traffic. McGee goes up. Rebound pulled down by Vic Fleming. And the Musketeer is on the break. Fleming pulls up out to Shimko. We got a blocking foul. That'll be Troy Taylor's second. Ralph Lee trying to get baseline. Troy Taylor trying to cut him off. Take a look right here. And Taylor experiencing some early foul trouble, and the Musketeers go at it from under their own basket. Jenkins plays it in. Jeff Jenkins with his fourth point, and Xavier goes up 6-4 to 17-13 mark. Xavier up by two. Musketeers in the man defense. Clarence McGee up top. Back door to Dennis Hobson in the ball game. Hobson hooks it off the glass. Ohio State back even 6-6. Nice communication between Clarence McGee and Dennis Hobson on that ball. Here Jenkins comes outside. He can hit that outside jumper for a big man. It's over to McDride. He's in the lead. Jumper short. Dave Jones pulls it down. And here come the Buckeyes the other way. Troy Taylor off to Hobson. We're going to get a goaltending call. No. No, they've got Hobson for an offensive foul. Dennis Hobson a little out of control here. And that call right there will save Xavier a bucket. Keith Wesson checks in for the Buckeyes. Clarence McGee will take a rest. We're even at six with 16.27 to go. Xavier on the attack. Unbeaten at home this season. Big Fleming on the side underneath Jenkins. Jenkins will bring it back out. McBride on the wing. Ronnie Stokes out of the mess with it. Campbell from 12. Throws up an air ball. Fleming with another rebound. Here comes Xavier with a chance to take the lead. Jenkins slows it up to McGride. Shots off the mark from John Shimko. Campbell's got it. Beautiful feed from Tony Campbell to Davy Jones. And Ohio State back on top, 8-6. Both these clubs love to run. You're going to see, a, see one of the better track meets this season right here at the Cincinnati Gardens tonight. 8-6, Ohio State. Fleming. To Lee, into Jenkins. Jenkins goes down, he's going to get whistled for a travel. We're going to 
going to take a timeout here at the Cincinnati Gardens. 15-13 to play, opening round of the NIT, and the Buckeyes on top of the Musketeers by 2-8-6. Welcome back to the Cincinnati Gardens. As I mentioned, John Gordon just in. His plane has landed on the roof from Atlanta. And John, nice to have you. Thank you, Lonnie. I tell you, I heard from Sue Schwartz, program director at WTVN. She told me if I showed up at halftime, I'd only get half pay. So that's why I got here just no in wonder, time. John, no wonder you're here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're set to go with NIT plays in the Cincinnati Gardens. And we'll pick up with the Buckeyes leading by an 8-6 count and controlling the basketball. Tony Campbell gets it low for Keith Lesson. And the whistle and foul, and this one's going to be called on number 33, Walter McBride. Take a look here, John. Campbell gets it inside for Wesson. Keith being aggressive underneath, what Elder, Mar Elder Miller wants to see. Whistle for the foul. That'll be the first foul on McBride. It's the fourth team foul called against the Musketeers. And Ohio State will get the ball out of bounds. Buckeyes have Jones, Campbell, Stokes, Taylor, and Wesson on the floor at the moment. And here's a steal. Fleming saved it, but it's kicked back to the hands of Campbell. Both these teams play very aggressive defenses. And they make... Here's Stokes from 18. Yes. And the Buckeyes lead it 10-6. to six. A four-point lead for Ohio State. I would expect this game to be very hotly contested, Lonnie. These two clubs, uh, of course, happy to be in postseason play. Xavier may be a little bit more disappointed in Ohio State that they didn't get an NCAA bid. But yet, they've got the home floor advantage here. Traveling call against Jeff Jenkins. You're right, John. And uh, being an in-state school and not getting an opportunity every season to take on the Buckeyes, that's also an added incentive anytime they come up against that. Now, this is only the third meeting between Xavier and Ohio State, and the Buckeyes have won the previous two. Stokes breaks the press and gets it to Jones. Ohio State attacking. Capacity crowd here tonight, and a very vociferous crowd, and much in the favor of Xavier. Steal by Lee. The lead pass for Fleming, and he lays it in. Nick Fleming at 6'6", six, six, just went right to the bucket. There's one of the height advantages, one of the few you'll see here tonight. Fleming at 6'6". Six, six. Well, he has a brother, Vern Fleming, who plays at Georgia. They were kind of hoping they might meet again in NIT play, but Georgia was knocked off by UT Chattanooga last night at Georgia. That's right. That hope uh, cut a little short there in the opening round. Vic hoping to go a little bit farther than brother Vern. Buckeyes attacking with a two-point lead. This is Wesson outside. Now to Jones. Ohio State against a very tight man-to-man -man put up by Xavier. Xavier likes to switch defenses. We'll see them in a zone, man-to-man. -man. Here's Campbell with a drive. Fade away, jump. Good. Tony Campbell's got his touch tonight. Two for two from the floor so far. Four points in the game for Campbell, and the Buckeyes leading now 12-8. to eight. Opportunity for Campbell in postseason play to extend his double-figure streak to 63. Fleming and a cross-court pass to Lee. Low for Jenkins. Now Shimko's got it. Back outside to Lee. This is McBride. Fakes the 15-footer with Campbell right on him. Jenkins from long range. No. Fleming underneath. His shot no good and a foul by Tony Campbell. Well, so far, that slender six-foot stature of Vic Fleming has been the big board, man. He's looking inside right here for an offensive board. And a costly foul on Tony Campbell. 12.54 remaining, first half of play. I think it's going to be up to either Ronnie Stokes or Troy Taylor, even though they only stand six feet. They're going to have to do some blocking out on Vic Fleming. Number 24, Richard Harris checks in the lineup for Xavier. Free throw good by Fleming. Second miss free throw. Holds the lead at three. The Buckeyes with the ball and a three-point margin. Winner of this game will advance to second round play in the NIT, and that game to be played either Sunday or Monday. We should have a notification on it, perhaps even during the game. Jones from the baseline. It doesn't go, and the rebound off to Jenkins. Outlet pass to Lee. He pushes it up court in a hurry, and it's stolen away. It Stokes steals it. Now the Buckeyes come back with a three-on-two break. Taylor at the baseline. Doesn't take the open jump. 
kicks it back out to Jones. Dunk from 18. No, the rebound, Wesson, and he can't get it out to Fleming. Off to Jenkins. Harris now has it banged away by Ronnie Stokes. And the ball out of bounds. It'll still be Xavier's ball. As you can see, John, both these teams love to run. At the end of the, the, end of the night, there are going to be some worn-out basketball players on this floor. Dexter Bailey checks back in for Xavier. Senior who's had quite a career for the Musketeers. Now Lee has it for Xavier. 12-9, Ohio State leading. And 12.05 remaining in the first half of play. As Lonnie mentioned earlier, Musketeers have played 10 games here at the Cincinnati Gardens, and they have not lost. A rebound battle, and Jenkins won it, but he fouled on the play. Well, that's about the third offensive rebounding foul we see called against Xavier, Lonnie. They're over-aggressive on the basketball board. Well, they probably look at uh, Ohio State just the way the Buckeyes look at them. For once, they're not going to be at a height disadvantage, and uh, Jeff Jenkins right there, clearly over the back of Keith Wesson to get that rebound. All right, a break in the action. 11.53 remaining, first half of play. John Gordon and Lonnie Haskins with you from the Cincinnati Gardens. And the Buckeyes lead the Musketeers 12-9. Ohio State basketball is an exclusive presentation of WTVN Sports and the rights granted by the Ohio State University intended solely for use by our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of WTVN-TV, TAP Broadcasting, and the Ohio State University is prohibited. Announcers for this telecast have been approved by the Ohio State University. Well, Stokes fouled on the play and will go to the free throw line. That's right, Ronnie taking a chance here because you can see he has no rebounding help underneath, but Ronnie knows how to draw that foul. He leans in and he'll go to the line. Early eight minutes and plus seconds of the game, Lonnie, and it appears the physicalness of the rebounding battle is going to play an important factor in the game. Well, with no real tall men, or what you call really tall men in there, I think it's going to come down to positioning, blocking out, physical play. Both teams trying to establish that right now. Stokes puts Ohio State in front by four and by five as the Buckeyes, always a good free throw shooting team, take a 14-9 lead over Xavier. The Muskies have had some big wins. They beat Dayton, an NCAA-bound team. They beat Marquette, an NIT team. And they beat Oral Roberts twice, an NCAA-bound team. Here's the drive by Fleming. The shot is up. And the foul is called against Dave Jones. The basket is good. Right there, you can see Vic Fleming using that 6-6 height advantage. He just goes into the lane, goes straight up, tries to get it over Davy Jones. You can see right there, he kind of pushed off before he let go, but foul they call is the one on Jones. Number 21, Leroy Grunich checks into the game for Xavier. Bob Stack using his bench. He's the eighth player in the game for the Musketeers. Free throw miss, and Ohio State controls with a three-point lead at 14 to 11. Stokes outside to Dave Jones. Now Campbell has it. This is Jones. Controls the loose ball. Brings it back outside to Ronnie Stokes. Stokes and Jones are playing as the guards at the moment. Taylor is on the bench. Here's Campbell. Low for Hobson. He's triple teamed and kicks it back out. Now Campbell's got it again. The drive by Tony. The continued play, but it doesn't go. And the rebound is picked up by Jenkins and Wesson fouled him. Right now, it seems the Musketeers rotating defenses are giving the Buckeyes trouble. It seems like they alternate every trip down the floor. Man-to-man, -man, then zone. Man-to-man, -man, zone. You know, you touched on that rebounding battle between these two clubs. Ohio State, of course, out-rebounded by almost three rebounds a game during the regular season. And they during the course of the 1983-84 regular season. 10.43 remaining, first half of play. Xavier to come within a point with a hoop. Let's we'll see if they get it. Fleming kicks it back outside to Bailey. This is Greenish with it. Now off to Harris. He faked the shot, put it up, and a foul called on Hobson. I'll tell you, Harris was lucky to get that foul because he didn't have a good shot. No, he didn't. It was really some nice defense by Dennis Hobson, forcing a bad shot, but unfortunately, Dennis's momentum there carries into the, into the player. Well, the foul called on Hobson is the second against Ohio State's Dennis Hobson. It's the seventh team foul against the Buckeyes. And that means that uh, Xavier will have the bonus the rest of the way. Substitutions for Ohio State. The freshman from Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary. 
Curtis Wilson checking in, replacing Dave Jones. Troy Taylor, the junior from Kent McKinley High School, checking in for Ronnie Stokes. Harris at the line to shoot a pair. He makes them both. It's a one-point game. Free throw missed by Harris. Well, this is certainly a hallowed hall for basketball. The uh, Cincinnati Bearcats used to play here when they had the great Oscar Robertson. There have been many a hoops made in this floor and exciting ones at that. Second free throw is made and it's now a two-point game at 14 to 12. Well, on the inbound pass, Hobson tried to get it to Curtis Wilson. He lost it and the turnover you see Wilson kick it out of bounds, brings the ball to Xavier, and they can tie the game, Lonnie. But so far, Xavier has not been uh, really effective from the free throw line. Here's Jenkins in the lane. He missed it. Rebound battle. Greenwich comes off with it and brings it back outside to Fleming. What I was going to mention is come tournament time, you can't afford to be spotty from the line. Kicks it back out to Bailey now. Xavier during the season, 69% from the line, which is not a bad team average. 14 to 12, Ohio State leading by two. Ten minutes to go, first half of play. Jenkins against Wesson with a spinning move. Lost it, but got it back. Then put it up, and it goes. No, it doesn't. Wesson with a battle for the rebound. He lost it. Put up and in by Richard Harris. And it's a tie game at 14. Credit that basket to the board work of the Musketeers. Without, without three or four shots, they wouldn't have had anything there. A reminder, we're playing with a shot clock here tonight. Here's the drive by Taylor. He's right inside. Missed the shot. Hobson rebound. Tips it up and it doesn't go. Bailey gets the rebound for Xavier. The Muskies for the lead. Here's a steal by Troy Taylor. Ohio State with a four-on-one fast break. Troy Taylor from 15 threw up an air ball. Well, that was intended to be a pass. Here's Jenkins. His shot is up. It doesn't go. And a foul on Tony Campbell. Well, that's going to be number two on Campbell. Troy Taylor's already got two. The Buckeyes getting in some foul trouble. I'll tell you, Troy waited far too long to decide whether to shoot or pass at the other end of that break. Well, Campbell's second foul. Buckeyes are over the limit. And at the free throw line will be senior Jeff Jenkins. 9-13 remaining, first half of play. Bob Stack, former assistant at the University of Pennsylvania. Six years here at Xavier University, and he's done a very good job. They've had their first back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. This team's starting to get used to the ending up in the W column. One-point lead for Xavier. They're up 15-14. And here's Jenkins again. And the Muskies lead it by two. Ohio State, Curtis Wilson, the freshman, double teamed in the backcourt. Pushes it up to Hobson. Now to Wesson. And he'll bring it back outside. Campbell to Wilson. This is Taylor against the Xavier zone. Now Campbell's got it. Trying to get it low for Hobson. Knocked out of bounds and last touch by Xavier. Stokes and Jones checking back in. For Ohio State. And Ralph Lee is back in for Xavier. Jones try for an easy basket underneath to Campbell. Knocked away by Xavier. Still Ohio State ball. Jones now has forced to kick it outside to Ronnie Stokes. Ohio State down by a pair at 16-14. At one time, they led by five at 14-9. Jones against the Xavier zone. Lux have not had much success inside yet tonight, John. Here's Taylor underneath to Campbell. He lost it, but it was last touched by Xavier. When you're tallest guy is 6'8", you got to play defense, and Xavier's doing that right now. Buckeyes 15 and 13 on the regular season. Here's Campbell underneath. Puts it up. Doesn't go, and we have a whistle. I believe that's a five-second violation against Ohio State. No, the uh, time clock went off. 
shot was not off in time and the shot clock goes off and the Buckeyes lose it on the possession. Well, really, Nagate's a brilliant move underneath by Tony Campbell. This is an adjustment for both teams as far as the shot clock is concerned. Shimko outside to Lee. Back to Shimko. Jones on him. Now Lee has it. This is Jenkins. Greenwich to Jenkins. Back to Greenwich again. Jenkins from long range. Got it. He likes to shoot out there. Just because he's a center, he doesn't necessarily do all his work inside. Four-point lead for Xavier, their biggest lead. 7.51 remaining. Ohio State a long time without a hoop. They were ahead by a 14-9 count. Taylor outside. Troy tried to penetrate and forced to bring it back out. Stokes to Campbell. Back to Stokes again. Here's Ronnie trying to get inside. Ball loose on the deck. Picked up by Wesson, and a jump ball is called. It's going to go to the Musketeers. Xavier possession, and right now the Muskies are playing better basketball than Ohio State. 7.30 remaining. First half of play, Xavier leads it by four. Well, coming up at halftime, Steve Minnick with his always interesting halftime report. And that'll be seven minutes and 30 seconds from now. At this moment, Ohio State's got to try to figure out how to get back in the ball game, right, Lonnie? Yes, they do, John. One thing they got to figure out is uh, he's changing defenses and Xavier's throwing at him. Inbounding John Shimko. This is the first time they face a team that'll throw a rotating defense at you this quickly. You know, teams will use a man to man and go to the zone, but usually they'll stick with one for a while. Xavier will switch on a dime. the steal and Troy Taylor did a nice job there as he kicked it away so the Buckeyes get it and an opportunity to see if they can't cut into the four point musky lead right now it's 18-14 it's been a long time between victories for Ohio State last time the Buckeyes won a game was on the 22nd of February when they trounced Michigan State at home winning 86-70 Troy Taylor yes That's the shot that Troy's been throwing in with regularity from mid-season on in the Big Ten. Now Troy, the second-leading scorer in Ohio State's team, averaging nearly 14 points a game. Cuts it to a two-point game with the score 18 to 16. Xavier with a lead in the ball. Ralph Lee outside. John Shimko. Here's a long-range jumper that doesn't go by McBride. And the rebound is Stokes. Opportunity for the Buckeyes to tie. Jones. Kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor didn't take an open jump from 18 and backs away with the dribble. Troy was a little surprised to find himself so wide open from that distance. Right now, Buckeyes have three guards in the game. Stokes, Jones, and Taylor. And Campbell and Wesson are the forwards. Here's Stokes looking for Campbell. Outside to Taylor. Again, the long-range jumper. Buckeyes have tied the game on outside shooting by Troy Taylor. 18-18. Time the game has been tied since 14 14, and previous then it was 6 6. The jumper is airborne and up and in by Jenkins. Wesson going for the steal, just got a little bit out of position. Not really a bad defensive move, but just gave Jenkins enough, enough of an edge to hit the jumper. Ohio State breaks the press as Jones brings it across. Xavier leading by two at 20 to 18, and 5 30 remaining in the first half of play. The winner advances to second round play in the NIT. The loser will go home and the season is over. Taylor misses, rebounded by Jenkins, and the whistle and foul, and it's offense called against Brennan. Well, that was very close. Could have been Tony Campbell's third foul. Well, I'll tell you why he called it on Greenwich, because there was no body contact there, but Greenwich put out his arm. You'll see it right here. Put out that arm before the body contact. Referee was right on top of it, called it against Xavier. Well, Greenwich goes to the bench, and Nick Fleming comes in for him. So right now, Xavier has its starting five on the floor. Bailey, 35. Jenkins, 23. Lee, 15. Fleming, 10. And Shimko, 42. 5-17 remain, and Ohio State hoop would tie the game. Buckeyes are down by a pair at 20-18. Taylor outside.
inside. He's hit the last two for Ohio State. Here's Jones. At the 15-foot mark, he threw it right to the hands of Lee. Off to Fleming. Fleming puts it up and in. Xavier by four. And right now, it seems any little edge the other team will give the other. Usually ends up in a bucket. Now here's Jones in trouble, and he gets it up court to Stokes. Stokes off to Campbell, and Campbell puts whoa, it up. Whoa. And a foul is going to be called on Ralph Lee before Campbell's basket. Tony Campbell with a shot out of the Pete Maravich book of off the glass. <laughs> And I don't understand why that basket's not going to count. Well, the foul was called on number 15, Ralph Lee, on Stokes' pass. So Stokes goes to the free throw line. Well, that explains it. 442 remaining. Got a good Clarence McGee into the game for Ohio State. Here's Ronnie Stokes with a one and one. Buckeyes trail by three, 22 to 19. Xavier, 20 and 10 on the year. They lost to the finals of the Midwest Conference Championship to Oral Roberts, losing by just two points. They had beaten Oral Roberts twice during the regular season, once in overtime at ORU. So you probably wouldn't have to ask Bob Stack what he thinks of the tournament deciding everything. <laughs> well, it was just this year that the uh, Midwest Conference titleist was awarded an at-large or a berth in the NCAA. 22-20 on the Stokes made free throw. Xavier with the lead in the ball. Fleming outside against Stokes and an Ohio State man kicks it off now to Lee. Low for Jenkins against uh, Wesson. Jenkins is down. Tied up for a jump ball. It'll be Ohio State's ball. Bob Stack is livid across the way because Jenkins was hurt on the play. That's going to cost Xavier possession. We can take another look at it, though. We'll see what exactly happened to Jeff Jenkins when he was in there. Xavier had good ball movement going until right here. Well, no foul was called. And as Jenkins was trying to uh, get himself back from the injury, he allowed himself to be tied up, and Ohio State gets it on the possession. That replay really didn't show whether he did get hit in the eye. Jenkins will come out of the game, and he's going to be replaced. Number 24, Richard Harris comes in for Xavier. 420 remaining. And Ohio State hoop ties the game. 22-20. Closely fought, as expected between these two teams. Xavier, a slight favorite to win, only because of the home floor advantage. Double teamed and a lap pass from Taylor to Ronnie Stokes. Musketeers doing a lot of trapping on the wings now out of this zone that they're running. This is Stokes. He double teamed again. Kicks it low for Wesson. Threw it through three men and out of bounds. And it's going to be Xavier Ball. Ronnie Stokes yelling at Keith Wesson to come and move for the ball. But really, Ronnie was trying to make something out of nothing right there. Timeout with 353 remaining. Xavier leads it by two. All right, we're going to take another look at that play that Jeff Jenkins claimed he got hit in the eye and what it ended up with. Ohio State took possession on the jump ball and took it back the other way. Right there, you can see Troy Taylor's hand definitely coming into the picture there. So Jenkins still sits, and Ohio State is pulled within two of Xavier. Neither one of these teams had a common opponent during the 1983-84 regular season. As mentioned, Xavier won 20 games, and Ohio State won 15. Xavier with the lead. Shimko from 18. Yes. He's one of their better outside threats. He hasn't really shown it yet tonight, but right there, looks like he may be heating up. Four-point lead for the Muskies. After Ohio State had led by five at 14 to nine, the Muskies caught up, and they have taken the lead and led ever since, although Ohio State did tie it. At 18, Troy Taylor keeps Ohio State in the game. I think he's got that spot marked. He gets the ball, he goes right to that spot, bingo. 3.08 remaining, Muskies lead it by two, 24-22.
There's a lot of speculation that the winner of this game will play the winner of the Marquette-Iowa State game that is being played tonight at Iowa State. Last touch by Ohio State, and it is still Xavier Ball. There are six other NIT games tonight, and then tomorrow night there are three remaining games. Oh, Shimko and Taylor performing here as Shimko hits the bottom of the net, and it's a four-point Xavier lead. Well, Shimko showed you a little Jerry West line drive action on that jumper. 26-22, less than two and a half remain. First half of play. John Gordon and Lonnie Haskins live from Cincinnati Garden as we bring you the game between Xavier and Ohio State. Well, Campbell has been virtually shut out since six early points in the early goings of the game. Holding the ball at the moment. Gets it off to uh, McGee. His baseline jump, no. The rebound, Campbell. And he ran into somebody and a foul called against Shimko. Nice work in there by Tony Campbell. He wants to go down and play inside, but unfortunately with two fouls, what he can do in there right now with the, the last 217 of the first half is a little inhibited. Right there, you can see Tony going in there and getting slapped. Ralph Lee is out. He's replaced by Jeff Jenkins. And Clarence McGee arrests for Ohio State. His replacement is Dennis Hobson. And Wesson also comes into the game, replacing David Jones. Well, the Buckeyes five on the floor. Campbell shooting the free throws. Stokes and Taylor. Wesson along with Hobson. Two-shot foul. Campbell missed the first. That's a rarity. Tony, an 81% free throw shooter. You know, John, we'll go back to that, uh, that jump ball down here. I'm of the feeling I wish they'd bring back the jump ball. I don't know about this alternate possession thing. I'd like to see the jump ball back. Well, they did make one little alteration in the rule, that being that when the defense is uh, close enough on the five-second call, but the defense does get the ball rather than alternate possession. But you're talking about the fact whenever there's a tie-up that it is alternate possession. Jenkins from outside. Got it. Xavier's biggest lead. They're up by six. 156 remaining. First half of play. Jeff Jenkins really gives opposing centers headaches in the fact that they do have to follow him out in that 18, 20 foot range because it is within his range. Here's Taylor again. He got it. Well, that wasn't a swish, but it rolled through. And Ohio State's Troy Taylor, who's been red hot here in the first half, keeps the Buckeyes in the game. Xavier by four with a minute and a half remaining. Harris outside. He hasn't handled the ball much offensively. Now it's low for Fleming. His shot is up, but it doesn't go. Good rebound by Hobson. Off to Taylor, and here come the Buckeyes, trying to close within two. Stokes kicks it back out to Taylor. Ohio State virtually attacking against the 2-3 Xavier zone. Campbell's got it. Campbell with the drive to the hoop. The double pump and off the board. Yes, it's good. Campbell with eight points in the game, and the Buckeyes are within a pair. Less than a minute remaining. 28-26, Shimko. Nearly stolen by Hobson. Then it is picked away by Taylor. He's still having trouble, Harris is. Here's a loose ball and a shot that's up and in. The referee says no harm, no foul, but I think there was some harm in there. Xavier by four again at 30 to 26. 29 seconds remain, and the Buckeyes may play for the last shot here. Well, they got away with one there. I think they did, too. Well, Ohio State, with 17 seconds remaining, content at this moment to play for a last shot. Here's Taylor. This is Stokes. Back to Troy. From long range. Oh, he hit again. What a performance by Troy Taylor. At the buzzer, the shot is up, and it does not count. It's a two-point game at the intermission. Troy Taylor was some shooting exhibition, Lonnie Haskins. It's a good thing, too, because right now Troy is keeping the box in it out there that 20-foot range. Well, it's a two-point game at the half. Xavier leads it 30 to 28. All right, here at the Cincinnati Gardens, the uh, Buckeyes trailing by two, 30 to 28 at halftime. And I read in the paper yesterday that Xavier was favored by two, so the uh, Bookies are right on it, right, Lonnie? Well, two-point must be the home court. The only thing is, though, Troy Taylor's got a little spot marked out there in that home court that's been working for the Bucks so far. Troy Taylor leading the Buckeyes with 10, and Jeff Jenkins has 14 for uh, 
procedure, but right now I think uh, the referees may be in there talking about what they're going to do to take control of this game in the second half because there's been a couple of times out there that's been on the brink of really getting out of hand here. Very physical game, and as a matter of fact, both teams were in the bonus very early, and I would expect the same to be for the second half, that we'll see a lot of free throws down the stretch run. Xavier, of course, a very physical team and a good veteran club. They've got four seniors that have been playing together ever since they were freshmen, and Ohio State just trying to come back a little bit from the four losses at the end of the regular season and salvage something out of this 83-84 year. And the Bucks have not done all that much inside so far. That may be one thing we've got to look for in the second half because uh, you can't let one team establish that physical uh, advantage and then carry it over in the second half because that could prove to be the difference in this one. Well, Lonnie mentioned uh, Troy Taylor's outside shooting. He had four baskets in the last four minutes of play. He has ten points in the game, and uh, it was Taylor that really kept Ohio State in the game. All right, from the Cincinnati Gardens, we've got 20 more minutes of basketball coming your way, but right now, Steve Minnick is standing by in our studios at WTVN in Columbus with our always interesting, interesting halftime report. Steve? Thank you very much, John Gordon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to the Ohio State Halftime Report. Hello again, I'm Steve Minnick. It's halftime down at the Cincinnati Garden. It's the first round of the National Invitation Tournament. At this point, the Buckeyes trailing Xavier by two points, 30-28. to 28. Highlights of that game, plus scores from the other games going on tonight, coming up in just a minute. First, here's what happened last night in the NIT. Tennessee Chattanooga defeated Georgia 74-69 in overtime. South Alabama was a one-point winner over Florida, 88-87. Tennessee defeated St. Peter's by 14 points, 54-40. Interesting here because Tennessee, with just six minutes left to play, trailed 38-35. Notre Dame defeated Old Dominion 67-62. Sophomore Ken Bartlow had 21 points for the Irish. Lamar defeated New Mexico by a bucket, 64-62. Southwest Louisiana defeated Utah also by a bucket, 94-92. George Alman scored the winning basket with just two seconds left to play. Now to tonight's games. We'll start it off with the game you're watching right now down at Cincinnati, Ohio State trailing Xavier 30 to 28 early in the ball game both teams exchange the baskets Jeff Jenkins there drives to tie it at four here come the Buckeyes Tony Campbell gives to Dave Jones Jones scores the Buckeyes take a two-point lead the Buckeyes able to take a four-point advantage Campbell down low comes up with the jumper the Buckeyes take the lead here 12-8 Ohio State ran the lead to five points but Xavier able to tie it back up again Richard Harris picks up the loose ball and scores that ties it 14 off Xavier then takes the lead. Jenkins hits the 21-footer, and the Musketeers lead by four. Jenkins, by the way, with 14 points. Troy Taylor comes up with a couple of bombs of his own. This one hits the bullseye, and once again, it's a tie ball game. Xavier, though, once again put on a big run to grab a six-point advantage, but with time running out, Taylor scores to make it a two-point game, 30-28 at halftime in favor of Xavier. Other games going on tonight. Right now in the first period, North Carolina State leads Florida State 32-30. Virginia Tech is three better than Georgia Tech at this point in the first quarter, 28-25. Getting underway in just a couple of minutes, Nebraska plays at Creighton. Iowa State hosts Marquette. Michigan is home against Wichita State. And on the coast later on tonight, Oregon hosts Santa Clara. When we come back, we'll talk about the NCAA tournament. There's a little controversy brewing. We'll hear from Maryland coach Lefty Drizel, plus the Lady Buckeyes get ready for their opener this Sunday in the NCAA women's tournament. That's all coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Ohio State Halftime Report. The NCAA tournament, as well as the NIT, is underway across the country. First at the East Regional in Charlotte, North Carolina. In the second period, Temple is leading St. John's 57-52. Later on in Charlotte, it's Auburn against Richmond. At the Mideast in Birmingham, Oregon and West Virginia are tied up early in the first period. That game will be followed by Alabama-Birmingham and Brigham Young. At the Midwest Regional in Memphis, Fresno State has a lead over Louisville, or Louisiana Tech 17-11. That game is also in the first period. At the conclusion of that game, Memphis State and Oral Roberts will take the court. Finally, at the West Regional in Salt Lake, Nevada, Las Vegas, and Princeton just getting underway. That game will be followed by LSU against the Dayton Flyers. Now, as we mentioned, there is a little bit of controversy brewing. It centers around where certain games are being played. One example is the Mideast Regional Final. It will be played in Lexington, Kentucky. That means 
Well, Kentucky Wildcats, if they get that far, will play the finals on their own home court. A lot of coaches do not like that idea, including Maryland head coach Lefty Drysell. Maryland could possibly be Kentucky's opponent in that game. At a news conference, Drysell spoke out against team playing tournament games on their own home court. I don't know what the politics is behind it, but it's, it should be changed. Definitely, without question, uh, unequivocally, and I called Vic Bubis and I called Dave Gabbitt and told him that. I told him that last year when we had to play Houston on home court. But it's like, you know, other things in America, it takes a while to change. What did they tell you? That's what they told me. That was the excuse they used. In other words, Kentucky said they won't, if they can't have the opportunity to play that, they won't have the regionals there. Then I say, okay, well, all I'd tell Kentucky if I was the head of the NCAA, I'd say, okay, Kentucky, you won't get one of our 52 beds. <laughs> you know, and then see if they don't change their mind. Speaking of teams hosting games on their own home court, Ohio State hosts Mississippi this Sunday. It's the first time any NCAA tournament game, men's or women's, has ever been played inside St. John Arena. The Lady Bucks hosting Mississippi on Sunday. It's round one of the Mideast Regional. Now, the Buckeyes agree it might be a little unfair to the visitors to play tournament games on their own home court. But they're also quick to point out they didn't make the rules. That's not fair to the other team, but, you know, who can you say? I, they want to make money, I guess, and, you know, we get the bigger crowd, and I guess that's basically how they're going on. I think it's pretty exciting. I think um, it's a, like an extra push, you know, because I think we had a home, home court advantage, and, you know, it gives us something really to work for. I think it's an advantage just because people feel comfortable here, and, you know, their friends and family will be here. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll really be... It'll help us out, you know, mentally more than anything. It's been a busy week for Ohio State. Not only have they had Mississippi on their minds, but winter quarterfinal exams as well. Some players, like Ohio State's leading scorer, Carla Chapman, have gone 24 hours at a time without sleep. It is a little tiring, but now that it's all over, I think we'll be able to catch up on our rest and get some sleep and be ready for Sunday. We're very fortunate to be playing at home so that we don't have to worry about traveling. Um, and I think that people have been able to manage their time so that they can study and they're able to practice. I think the only thing that might hurt us is the fact that people are staying up so late that they're tired and then maybe they're not as effective in practice. And the thing that I worry about is that they might get hurt. Now, the Bucks take a very respectable 22-6 record into Sunday's game. That includes winning 17 of 18 in the Big Ten, but only 5 of 10 in the preseason against much more formidable opponents. But this return to a more tougher brand of basketball doesn't have the Lady Bucks rile. Well, I'd like to think that we played a very competitive preseason, and we learned and we improved, and we continue to play a competitive season. Uh, and just keep them, you know, we just kept improving. One thing is, some of the teams that we play in the Big Ten played very closely with a lot of top ten teams. Minnesota is an example that lost by four points to Tennessee at Tennessee, and Tennessee is in the NCAA uh, and a team that played close with Mississippi. So I think that our competition in the Big Ten is improving and is somewhat underrated nationally, and that's what we have to do is be very tough against Mississippi to show people that the Big Ten is, in fact, a competitive conference. That'll do it from Columbus. Time now to go back to Cincinnati. John Gordon and Lonnie Haskins. All right, here at halftime, the Xavier Musketeers are leading the Ohio State Buckeyes by a pair of points. 30 to 28, Lonnie Haskins reviews the scoring in the first half of play. Well, John, the Buckeyes hit just under 46% from the field at 45-8. And the Musketeers are pretty much living up to what they've done throughout the season. They are 13 to 26 from the field for 50%. That's right around what they average. They've got a 17-12 advantage on the board, so that's one area that they have been controlling so far. One thing that the Ohio State needs to turn around if they're going to get back on this thing in the second half. Jeff Jenkins has 14 points to lead the Musketeers. Vic Fleming with nine. Troy Taylor has eight for the Buckeyes. Tony Campbell with eight. We understand that Tony Campbell has uh, split the webbing between two of his fingers. I don't think it's on his shooting hand. Uh, maybe we can see if it's taped up. And it is not. I don't believe it's on his shooting hand, though, so uh, he is still in there. Maybe he just caused him a little bit of pain. Both teams with too many turnovers. Nine for the Bucks, ten for the Musketeers right now as we get ready for the second half. All right, thank you, Lonnie. And here we go with a second slice of the action from the Cincinnati Gardens. Nice to have you with us tonight for Ohio State basketball in IT style with the Buckeyes and the Muskies. A pair of Ohio schools trying to advance to second round play. This is Jenkins. Kicks it back outside to Ralph Lee. 
John Shimko, Vic Plenum, Dexter Bailey, the other starters of the second half for Xavier. Here's a long range bomb that doesn't go. And the rebound tapped out and picked up by Ronnie Stokes. Nice lead pass for Troy Taylor. He's knocked down and he throws the ball off of Ralph Lee's body, but it didn't hit Lee and it goes out of bounds. Xavier ball. I guess it did. The ref was right on top of it from here. It was kind of tough to tell, though. I thought it, it looked like it did uh, go off somebody, but evidently not. So Xavier gets it back. The Buckeyes have Taylor and Stokes, Keith Wesson, Dennis Hobson, and Tony Campbell starting the second half. Chimko off to Fleming. The whistle and the foul, and it's called against Wesson. It'll be team one against Ohio State in the second half. Things getting physical right away under there. Jeff Jenkins is practically laid out like he was on a couch. <laughs> the couch happened to be number 43 there. Keith Wesson, take a look there. 19-13 remaining in the game. Xavier brings it in bounds. Didn't take us long to get to the bonus in the first half. We'll wait and see how the foul situation goes in the second half. Nobody really in any danger of being in foul trouble. No player has three fouls on him. Bailey underneath. He's in trouble against Campbell. Puts it up and it doesn't go. Rebound Fleming and stripped away by Stokes. Here come the Buckeyes in a hurry. Stokes in a fast break. Off to Hobson. Ten-footer. Yep. Tie game at 30. The Buckeyes can keep hitting their, hitting their outside shots, John. One thing that's going to do is going to keep Xavier from going into that zone too often. And maybe they can get some kind of static defense down here to work against. Sure looked like Ohio State was in a hurry on that play. They may want to pick up the tempo just a little bit. Although Xavier has a tendency to run too, right, Lonnie? They love to run. Both teams love to run. Bailey outside. Tied at 30. Xavier and Ohio State. The winner advances. The loser goes home. And the 83-84 season is over. It's low for Bailey. Oh, and a great block by Campbell. But Bailey gets it and sticks it back in. That was nice defense by Tony, but I think he realized if he tried to go back, he probably would have just got saddled with his third foul, so Bailey goes ahead and takes it in. That's Bailey's first hoop of the night. He's averaging just over nine points in a game. Here's Hobson, turn around, and the whistle and foul, and he'll go to the line. Team one against Xavier in the second half. You didn't tell me your uncle was coming to the game. Old rainbow head here tonight. <laughs> Right there's another look at it. Dennis Hobson going straight up. Nice form. Staying away from the block shot and gets hit on the wrist. That was Uncle Lanny, wasn't it? Not to be confused with Uncle Lanny or... I don't even remember his name. <laughs> I've tried to forget. <laughs> All right, Hobson hits. 32-31. One-point game. Hobson again ties it at 32. Second time the game's been tied in the second half. 17-49 remaining. You can expect a close one here tonight, folks. These two clubs are used to playing in close games. Ohio State lost in their last game of the regular season to Indiana at Bloomington, 5-4. Jumper by Lee, no good. And the rebound to Hobson. Well, Hobson playing well at both ends of the floor. Out with the Taylor, who had a fantastic last portion of the first half, hitting four baskets. He has 10 points in the game. Stokes outside. Against Fleming. Off to Ta Campbell. Underneath the pass. Banged away by Jenkins. And then a foul called on Hobson. Second team foul called against Ohio State in the second half. Xavier has one. And Xavier gets the ball back and a chance to break the tie. Ohio State could have taken the lead. This is Ralph Lee. Against Troy Taylor. Back outside to Shimko. Now to Fleming. Lee again. Cross court pass to Shimko. Has to kick it back out to Lee. Against Taylor. Lee with a spinning move and a turnaround jump. No. Rebound battle. Look at those guys crash that board. Musketeers still controlling those boards, John. Jenkins got it. Well, Eldon up off the Ohio State bench. I think he wants to get the referees here for just a moment. Dexter Bailey kicks it back outside to Jenkins. That'll be an air ball. And the rebound to Stokes away from the hoop. Right now, the quickness of Ronnie Stokes around that basket is 
really getting Ohio State some badly needed possessions out of there. Well, the Buckeyes against the 2 3 Xavier zone. Trying for the lead. Something they haven't had since they were ahead 14 to 11 in the game. Here's Taylor. Shot is up, and it doesn't go, but the foul is called on Ralph Lee. Team foul number two against Xavier in the second half. Troy Taylor's success at the end of that first half, as you mentioned, now forcing them to pick him up a little bit higher. Right here. Troy still 17 feet out, and he'll get fouled if he doesn't get the basket. Well, the Buckeyes in the first half, six of eight at the free throw line. Xavier, four of seven. Here's the charity toss by Taylor. Short. Ohio State still searching for that second half lead. And they still don't have it. Taylor misses the pair. Tied at 32. Jenkins back outside to Lee. Fleming off to Jenkins. This is Bailey. Here's Lee. He got it low for Jenkins. And to kick it back out, Shimko shot blocked by Taylor and picked up by Campbell, but he lost it. Still loose on the deck, and Taylor couldn't get the ball, and Campbell fouls for the third time in the game. Boy, talk about coming up empty after a great effort. Tony was trying to slap it down court. Then he almost had possession. Two Buckeyes all by themselves at the end of the floor. All they get out of it is Tony Campbell's third foul. Well, Ohio State's tried to get the lead three times in the second half, and they still don't have it. Two clubs are tied. Fifteen forty-seven remain. 32-32 in a tie game. And it's Xavier's ball with a chance to crack the 32 tie. Lonnie? Well, we see, I still haven't seen Ohio State do anything to try and reverse that edge that uh, Xavier's having right now on the board. That's still still in the Buckeyes underneath. This is Dexter Bailey, double-A player of the year from Cincinnati. John Shimko, he gets this one away. No, it doesn't go, and Keith Wesson rebounds. Good position over Jeff Jenkins. One of the few times we've seen the Buckeyes have good position. That's right. He definitely set himself in there that time. Campbell to Stokes. Taylor free. The drive by Troy. A little stop and pop. Yes, it's good. And Ohio State leads it by two. The quickness of number 14 setting that up, getting him by his first defender. Then he just jumps over the man inside, and the Bucks back on top. All right. That's 12 in the game for Troy Taylor. Dexter Bailey against Tony Campbell. Boy, he's got to be careful. Shimko. Ralph Lee low for Fleming. And the foul. This one will be against Keith Wesson. And Fleming will be at the line to shoot a pair. I don't know if we'll get a chance across the way. Bob Stack is the head coach of the Xavier Musketeers. Wayne Morgan is one of his assistants. And another assistant is uh, Harry Crone. And Harry, a uh, former coach in Columbus at Pleasant View High School, old Pleasant View High, and also used to be at uh, Bishop Reedy High School in Columbus. Nice to see Harry once again. Jim Chellis is another of the Xavier assistants, former Ohio State baseball player. Well, making one of two, the ball loose on the deck and picked up by Campbell. So the Buckeyes have the ball with the lead, and they're up by one. 34-33, less than 15 remaining in the game. Here's Campbell, shot blocked, and knocked out of bounds. Still Ohio State ball. I think Tony totally forgot that John Simcoe was still there behind him. He went up, all of a sudden the ball wasn't in his hands anymore. Campbell has eight points in the game. And the pass, this could be trouble here. Taylor's got it from Stokes, and they bring it across as the ball went to the backcourt. Xavier applies pressure on every play, out of bounds. During offensive uh, patterns by Ohio State, what have you. Here's Taylor. It's up. It doesn't go. And J Dexter Bailey gets the rebound. Stumbles with the ball. Brings it off to Lee. Shovel pass to Shimko. Layup, no, but an offensive foul on Shimko. I think the Buckeyes had a break coming after all that. It looked to me like there was a little over and back here in the first place going down the floor. One of the officials was right on the play, and there was an over and back violation, but they didn't see it. Well, the ball saved from going out of bounds to Victor Fleming, and he lays it in. Xavier leads by a point. 
Both bird pressure. Troy Taylor trying to bring it across, and he does to Dennis Hobson. Hobson puts it up. It doesn't go. The rebound kicked away. Last touch by Ohio State. Minimal momentum now for the Muskies, but the Buckeyes can't get rattled. They're still in this one. Settle back. Get back your game. Attendance tonight, 9,715. And I would say that's very close to capacity. There are very few vacant seats here at the Cincinnati Garden. Yours was one of them for a while. That's right. <laughs> you almost sold it too, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was considering <laughs> offers. 1351 here. Xavier's ball. Well, first half, we saw a lot of substitutions. We haven't seen too many here in the second half. Both folks are still going with the same five that they started with in the second half, and we played over six minutes. Fleming outside, trying to get it low, and he does to Jenkins. Back outside to Lee. Here's Shimko. Again low for Jenkins. Stripped to the ball, and a foul called on Tony Campbell, and that's his fourth of the game. Now Elder Miller has to make a move here. And right there, you can see Tony not using position when you stick your hand in there. That's not the way they teach you to play the defensive end of it. This is a big swing of momentum right here in this ball game. Tony Campbell with his fourth foul. Up to that point, the Buckeyes were getting nice defensive help underneath there anytime the ball was going inside. But Campbell, Campbell will take a seat. Has fouled out of four games this year, Lonnie, and he goes to the bench now. David Jones comes in for him. But you'd have to think he'll take at least a six, seven, maybe eight minute respite here, right? Well, I think that depends on what the game dictates. If uh, Xavier shows signs of pulling away, you probably have to put him back in there because you can't hold him and sit him out hoping for what happens in the final minutes because there may be no final minutes. Xavier by two, 36-34. On the made free throw by Jeff Jenkins, and Ohio State wants a timeout. Well, Elder Miller wants to talk it over now. 13-34 remaining. Xavier grasping for an edge in the game and they may have it with Tony Campbell on the bench with four fouls. Muskies lead it by two. Well, Elder Miller called that last time on, Lonnie, and I'm sure he wanted to discuss offensive strategy with his Ohio State team with Tony Campbell on the bench. Another thing, even with Campbell in there, the Muskies are still controlling the boards, and now the Buckeyes have really got to start positioning and battling every ball. Jenkins will try to put the Muskies ahead by three. They led by two at the half, and there's the three-point margin. Muskies have outscored Ohio State 5-zip after Ohio State had taken a two-point lead at 34-32. Taylor breaks the press to Dave Jones. Tell you, Tony Campbell averages about 35 minutes a game, and he's going to be sitting down for quite a time here. Here's Stokes. Brings it back outside to Jones. Ohio State attacking against the man-to-man -man put up at the moment uh, by Xavier. Now they switch to a 3-2 zone. And a near steal, and it is picked away by Ralph Levy. Ahead to Fleming, and the whistle and the foul. And the referee slipped on a wet spot, but is calling the offensive foul against Ralph Lee. That is a Troy Taylor special. Just sit there. <laughs> if the ball's going by, you find a man and let him run right over you. Take another look at it right here. They're going to get the ball to Fleming in the middle, but Troy just posts up. And Lee runs him over, and the Buckeyes get a big possession. Interesting uh, visual on the replay. The lead official... Lou Mosier did not make the call. It was the trail official that did. And you can see Mosier, who's in your picture right there with Dave Jones, watching the play. Ohio State trying to come within one. They're down by three. Hobson, Wesson, Stokes, Taylor, and Jones in the game for the Buckeyes. Taylor outside. Shimko in the 3-2 zone. Actually, it's a 2-3 zone with Shimko and Fleming out front. Here's Wesson in the lane. And a foul called against Xavier. That'll be their fifth team foul. Team fouls are even, and it won't be long before we hear the bonus here at the Cincinnati Garden. That was a beautiful head fake by Keith Wesson. That set up this whole play, that head fake. That's why he's at the line right now. See right there, a nice pass in from Davy Jones to the corner. Keith gets Jenkins way off his feet. Wesson with a chance to 
get the Bucks a little bit closer. All right, here's the first Xavier substitution of the second half. John Shimko is rested, and Richard Harris comes in for him. Harris played briefly in the first half. Wesson at the line, shooting a pair. And he puts Ohio State within two. Free throws are certainly going to play an important part in this one. It's been a close game all the way. Buckeyes led it one time by five in the first half. You don't shoot your free throws, John. I don't think you, have, you can hold any hope of going in and winning any kind of tournament. Because you know you're going to get into some tight ball games somewhere between now and when it comes time to crown a champion. Well, last night, for example, three home teams won, three home teams lost in six games that were played. And five of the six games were decided by five feeders. In the lane, Jenkins shot up and a foul on Weston. Foul's really starting to get the Bucks in trouble. That's got to be at least three on Keith. Well, Wesson drawing his fourth foul. Fourth. And we have Campbell on the bench with four. Wesson in the game with four. Well, you know, if Keith Wesson sits down, the, <laughs> the tallest the Bucks can be, and there is six, seven with Wesson out. He's going to stay in right now. All right, Jenkins is going to be at the line to shoot a pair. Elder Miller trying to get the ear of referee Ron Foxcroft. Foxcroft was listening to him, but we'll wait and see if he was listening intently. <laughs> Xavier by two, 38-36. And Wesson with four fouls to the bench, replaced by Clarence McGee, the sophomore from Chicago and Weber High School. Make him a freshman. And the toss is good. 39-36. Xavier picking up on their free throw tosses. Stokes beats the press as he comes to the front court. Off to McGee. Hobson had it. He lost it in the whistle with a foul on Jenkins. Well, I tell you, we can't go but three, four seconds without a foul being called. Ronnie Stokes did a brilliant job of breaking the press that time. A little hesitation dribble back in his own end of the court. Then he just flew by the defenders. And the Bucks should have had an easy layup out of that. Well, evidently, Elvin Miller's lecture to referee Foxcroft did make a little sense because Foxcroft had that call. That's 16 against Xavier. Only the second foul called against Jeff Jenkins. Two-point game on the made free throw by Dennis Hobson. 12-13 remaining in the game. Now this very boisterous crowd. Looks like they may pay a play a factor before it's over. And Hobson misses. Jones rebound. Kicks it back outside to Hobson. The Buckeyes with a hoop could tie the game. 12 minutes remain. Jones back outside to Taylor. Troy, who had a hot hand in the closing minutes of the first half. Let's see if he takes the jump. No, he doesn't. Brings it back outside to Jones. Here's Ronnie Stokes, 18-footer. Yes. The game is tied at 39. Third time it's been tied here in the second half. 11.42 remaining. This is Harris. Back outside to Fleming. Off to Dexter Bailey. Now McBride. A whistle and a foul, and this one's calling on Clarence McGee. And there's the bonus now for Xavier. The remainder of the game with 11 minutes and 27 seconds to go. Tough situation there right now for Clarence McGee because Jenkins wants to post up and he's going to lean on you no matter who's in that post. And all you can do is try and lean back because if you give him his way, then you're just giving up points. Well, we had a total of 17 personal fouls called in the first half. We've already had 13 here in the second half. And there's still 11.27 remaining. And Jenkins is shooting a one and one. If he makes the first, he'll get the second. Xavier by a point at 40 to 39. And Jenkins having a big night. 18 points, seven rebounds. He's a senior. A four-year starter for Xavier. Muskies lead it by two. 11-27 remaining in the game. I don't imagine Ohio State will have a whole lot of trouble breaking Xavier's press, Lonnie. Well, in the first half, only a couple of times did it give them any trouble. Other than that, they've been able to come through it pretty well. In fact, a couple of times they've set up some pretty easy baskets. 
especially Xavier now. They'll have to be careful. The next foul they commit will be the seventh, putting Ohio State at the free throw line. They won't want to be committing any backcourt fouls. Stokes in trouble, loses the ball, then regains the dribble. Now Drani brings it back outside to Troy Taylor. Fans yelling for double dribble, but the ball was banged away from him. Stokes. Triple team out to Hobson. Hobson puts a 10-footer up that doesn't go. Two players are on the floor, and Jenkins rebound. I tell you, Troy Taylor also uses that arm. It's very clear. He didn't get called for it there, but Troy's got to watch that. Xavier by two, 41-39, and they have the ball. Jenkins outside. He bombs from 16 in a short, and the rebound to David Jones. State trying for the tie. They're down by a pair. Stokes and Jones playing catch. Jones from 20. No. Rebound. Hobson. Back outside to Troy Taylor. The other NIT games tonight. Nebraska is playing at Creighton. Florida State at NC State. Last year's NCAA champion. Mar uh, Marquette is at Iowa State. Here's McGee with a shot that doesn't go. But Hobson rebound. Great work by Dennis Hobson. The Buckeyes are going to get three shots at the hoop this time down. Thanks to two offensive rebounds by Dennis. Well, they better hope the third time's the charm. Here's Jones. Ten-footer. Doesn't go. And the rebound is off to Jenkins. Well, they certainly had their chances. Georgia Tech playing at VPI. Wichita State at Michigan. Steal by Hobson. And a whistle and a foul. And this one's going to be called on Dexter Bailey. Right now, Dennis Hobson really showing us some defense and some rebounding. So at the 9.31 mark, the Buckeyes get to the free throw line for the remainder of the game. Dennis says we're going to win this ball game if i got to do it by myself. Dexter Bailey with his fourth foul to the bench, and he is replaced by Leroy Greenwich. Santa Clara is playing at Oregon to complete the NIT card for tonight. Tomorrow night, a doubleheader at Philadelphia at the Palestra, Boston College in St. Joe's, Pittsburgh in LaSalle. And the final game of the first round of the NIT, Fordham has to go all the way out to Utah to play Weber State. We got an NCAA final in, John. Temple, fans of the Owls saying, take a look at us, have beaten St. John 65-63. And now the Owls will play North Carolina on Saturday down at uh, Greensboro. Some reward. Or Charlotte they'll play. 41-41 in a tie game here as the Buckeyes and the Muskies of Xavier are battling. Here's the rebound battle, and this one belongs to Greenwich and Musketeer land. Here's a jumper by Fleming that doesn't go. Greenwich rebounds. He shot off the board. No. Rebound battle again, and here's Xavier with three tries. Loose on the deck and a foul on Troy Taylor. Four possessions. Xavier had four possessions that time down. It seems like right now the team that gets the second and third shot may be the team that wins this one, John. Well, the foul on Taylor. That'll be his third of the game. Keep in mind now, Ohio State has two on the bench right now with four fouls, including leading scorer Tony Campbell and Keith Wesson. And Dexter Bailey is on the bench for Xavier. He has four fouls on him. At the line, McBride, a one-and-one. One. His shot is up and in. One thing the Bucks have been able to do is keep it close. At least try McBride is just a 53% free throw shooter. And here's McBride again, trying to give his musky team a two-point lead, and he does. 43-41. Ronnie Stokes and semi full court pressure put on by Xavier. But Stokes brings it across with Vic Fleming on him. Temple with a win over St. John's will play North Carolina Saturday, and North Carolina's the top seed in the East Regional. That's an NCAA play. Auburn playing Richmond in the second game of the doubleheader down at Charlotte tonight. I love that Charles Barkley. Boy, wow. he is an exciting player. Didn't he have some game against Kentucky last week in the SEC Finals? Sure did. Buckeyes need a hoop to tie it up here. They're down by a pair. There's Ronnie Stokes right at the buzzer. Doesn't go. Rebound. Stokes outside. Baby Jones in the corner. He's free. Ooh, just short. And the rebound to Jenkins. Playing with a shot clock here, and Ohio State had to hurry to get the shot off. Here's a steal by Hobson. He's double teamed and gets it out to Taylor. 
Ohio State running, trying for a tie. Here's Troy Taylor in the lane, underneath the McGee, and he couldn't control the pass, and it's out of bounds. Oh, frustrated Eldon Miller. Mentally, mentally, sometimes they just tune out for a second, John, and that's all it takes. So there's a timeout here at the Cincinnati Gardens, and Xavier is ahead by two. Very quickly, Lonnie filling out the NCAA card tonight at Birmingham. Oregon State playing West Virginia, Alabama, Birmingham playing Bur Brigham Young. At Memphis, Fresno State against Louisiana Tech, at Memphis State against Oral Roberts. And at Salt Lake City, Nevada, Las Vegas playing Princeton. Look out for the Princeton Tigers and LSU against Dayton. It's a team that uh, Xavier has beaten this year. They beat the Flyers, an NCAA bound team. All right, here at the Cincinnati Gardens, it's a two-point game, and Xavier has the ball. They're ahead by two, 43-41. They led by two at the half, 30-28. to 28. Seven, 43 remaining. Tony Campbell back in the game for Ohio State after that timeout. He's playing with four fouls on him. It's low for Bailey. Oh, he missed the dunk, and the ball goes out of bounds. Technical foul against Dexter Bailey for holding onto the rim. Boy, how to take a gift two points and turn it into a, a burden on your team right here. Do it, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slingshot effect, wasn't it? Ohio State will have Dennis Hobson shoot the technical, and then they'll get the ball. Well, Bob Stack calling out the defense. That's just a one-shot technical. The Buckeyes trail by a point at 43-42, and they get the ball and a chance to take the lead. I'll tell you, if the Bucks win this one by one point, <laughs> Dexter's <laughs> never going to forget his slingshot. Ohio State has led once in the second half at 34-32. They have a chance here with a hoop to take the lead. Campbell in the game, and he has only eight points thus far. Troy Taylor. Outside, the lead pass for Campbell, and he got it on the alley-oop. Tony called for it. He looked at Troy and just pointed to the sky and said, give it to me. Troy gave it to him. The Bucks are on top. So the Buckeyes are ahead by a point at 44-43. 7-0-1 remaining. Here's Jenkins to the lane, to the hoop, and up and in. What a play by Jeff Jenkins. Right there, Tony Campbell could not step in to help him. Tony was right there, but he could not help him. Xavier by a point as these two clubs trade baskets. And we go to the wire at the Cincinnati Garden. Troy Taylor with an off shot that doesn't go. No foul is called. And the rebound to Xavier. A lead pass and stolen away. Troy Taylor is down. He gets up, takes the shot, and now brings it back outside to Clarence to Keith Wesson. Troy had realized the Bucks had the ball. They could have gotten easy two out of that. He was just laying on the deck. Well, Ronnie Stokes saying there's a wet spot on the floor, but the referee is not going to do anything about it. 6-13 remaining. Ohio State down by a point and trying for the lead. Here's Taylor outside. Kicks it low for Hobson. Nearly tripped, but he gets inside and lays it in. That gets the crowd going again as the Buckeyes go back up by one. 5-53 remaining. Oh, what a close game here at the Cincinnati Gardens. The Buckeyes and the Muskies fighting for survival. No good on the throw by McBride. The rebound off to Hobson. And the foul called against Vic Fleming and Ohio State's Tony Campbell's at the line. The reappearance of Tony Campbell in that Buckeye lineup making a big impact at the moment. A foul called against Fleming is only his first of the game. Harris comes out. He's replaced by Dexter Bailey. He's playing with four fouls on him. Campbell's at the line, shooting a pair. Oh, Tony's 0 for 3. That's very unusual. In his last three tries, he's now 2 for 5 at free throws. He'll try to put Ohio State ahead by 2. And Campbell again. He got it. Two-point lead for Ohio State. And Xavier has the ball. 5.38 remaining. The winner advances, possibly to play the winner of the
the Marquette Iowa State game. That's not official. Here's the drive by Jenkins. The shot is up and it doesn't go, and the foul is called against Keith Westman, and he's out of the game. He'll be the first of many to foul out here tonight. Take a look right here at Dave Jenkins going down the line. That'll send Keith Weston to the bench. Put Clarence McGee back in the lineup. Ohio State with just 10 players. Same for Xavier. As a matter of fact, Xavier has only nine dressed tonight. Two remaining, and the Buckeyes leading by a pair at 47-45. But Jeff Jenkins, who is the leading scorer in the game, with 22 points, is at the free throw line. Both teams with a lot of support here at the Garden tonight. Well, it's tournament time. This is a fun time, and it's also pressure cooking time. 5.22 to go, and here's Jenkins. He's got two shots here. Closes the gap to one, 47-46. Jenkins with 23 points in the game. Make it 22. His number is 23. 12 in the game for Fleming. Buckeyes have three players in double figures. Hobson, Campbell, and Taylor. Tied at 47. And the fourth time we've been tied here in the second half. Buckeyes break the pressure as Stokes brings it across. Hands off to Troy Taylor. 5-10 remain. Campbell outside. Against the zone. Now Stokes. Troy Taylor. Campbell again. Buckeyes perimeter passing at the moment. Here's Troy, double pump, puts it up and it doesn't go. He fights for the rebound and comes off with it in the corner. A good hustling play. Hobson with a back and a jumper that's up and in. Fade away by Dennis Hobson. What a game he's having. And that basket set up by the great hustler, Troy Taylor. Everybody go over to the boards right now. Bucks up by two. 49-47, Xavier fighting for the tie. Ohio State has never led by more than two in the second half. They had as much as a five-point lead in the first half. Low for Jenkins. He ran right into Ronnie Stokes, but a foul was called on Clarence McGee before. Boy, that's a tough call for Ohio State. Right there, you can see the Muskies looking inside. Ronnie Stokes coming over from the weak side, trying to help out. Well, one and one for Jeff Jenkins. 74% free throw shooter coming in. I tell you, there are a lot of folks wiping their brows on this one. <laughs> a pressure cooker here at the Cincinnati Garden. Right now, it's a two-point lead for Ohio State. Jenkins fangs one home. Muskies have been on their free throws in this second half. Boy, they really have. 24 in the game for Jeff Jenkins, and he's the leading scorer. Hobson has 14 to lead Ohio State. This is Jenkins again, and he got it. The game is tied at 49. Fifth time it's been tied in the second half. And the Buckeyes against the Xavier pressure. Bring it across with Troy Taylor. He stops the dribble and crosses the pass off to uh, Hobson. Now Campbell's got it. And Campbell kicks it back outside, and he threw it out of bounds. Pressure defense really had the Buckeyes confused that time down. They came close to turning it over by three or four times before they finally did throw it out of bounds. I'll tell you, Xavier's going to keep that pressure on as long as it looks like the Bucks are getting rattled by it. All right, Xavier can gain the lead. Tied at 49. Jenkins to Bailey. This is Shimko. The Muskies trying for their 21st win of the year and hoping to keep their home court record unbeaten in this 83-84 season. Low for Fleming. His shot doesn't go, but Shimko rebounds. He put it up and in. There you go again. The Buckeyes force a bad shot, but a second shot goes. Foul called against Ralph Lee. Ohio State can tie. Well, 
Shimko just put Xavier in front with a layup. And now we'll go to the other end where the Buckeyes are at the charity stripe trying to tie the game. Ralph Lee is fouled out. The first of the Xavier Muskies to be disqualified. Keith Wesson has already fouled out for Ohio State. Well, there's a shot of uh, Jimmy Chellis there, the uh, former Ohio State baseball player as an assistant coach for the Muskies. As you looked at Ralph Lee, let's see who's at the line here. I think it's going to be Troy Taylor. Bob Stack taking his time, getting his substitution in, and it's going to be Richard Harris. Nip and tuck game at the Cincinnati Garden with the Buckeyes and the Muskies. Brutus. Battling and trying to get to that second round of the NIT. Brutus taking it all in. All right, here's Troy Taylor. It's a one and one for Taylor. Got it. If he makes this one, we're back to a tie. I don't think there's little doubt this is the Muskie's home floor, isn't it? All right, Troy again. Tie game at 51. And the sixth time the game's been tied here in the second half. Three minutes and 28 seconds remain. Hang on from the Cincinnati Garden. Three minutes, 28 seconds remain. Lonnie, and it's a 51-51 tie game. Well, this is everything that the fans here showed up to see, and uh, I'll tell you can't predict which way it's going to go because nobody's really got an edge right now. It's just been back and forth, back and forth. I'll tell you, though, the reappearance of Tony Campbell in that Buckeye lineup has helped that Dennis Hobson's playing a whale of the ball game. Well, Hobson's probably playing the game of his life. The freshman from Toledo Boucher leads the Buckeyes in scoring with 14. Troy Taylor's now tied him at 14. And Hobson also has seven rebounds in the game. Xavier's ball. If they get a hoop here, they'll take the lead. It's tied at 51. This is Dexter Bailey against Tony Campbell, who's playing with four fouls on him. Outside to Jeff Jenkins. Shimko with Taylor on him. Harris, who's into the game for Ralph Lee, who's fouled out. Bailey and Jenkins outside. Harris again. Less than three remaining in the game. 2.54 to be exact. Jenkins, and he's double teamed. But he backs away with Clarence McGee on him. That's the man the Muskies probably wanted to take that next shot. Jenkins has been hot. 26 points tonight. Shimko and Fleming outside. Two and a half remain. 51-51 and a tie. And the loser goes home. The winner advances to second round play in the NIT. Hoping eventually to get to Madison Square Garden for the semifinals and finals. And an eventual championship. Last year, the Big Ten had three teams in the NIT, but no, no team advanced farther than the second round. Michigan State and Northwestern were beaten in the second round. Minnesota beaten in the first round. Shimko outside with less than two remaining in the game. On this possession now, Xavier has been content to pretty much hold the ball. Near steal, but Jenkins gets it off to Fleming. I think the Bucks were getting away with a little hand slap in there. 143 remaining in a 51-51 tie. This is Fleming. Outside to Shimko. Still Xavier with the ball. Jenkins with McGee on him. Here's the drive by Jenkins. He took it to the hoop, and he missed the shot, but he was fouled by Hobson. You see there, great ball handling skills for a big guy. Jenkins can really take it to the hoop. Well, he's a senior from Newark, New Jersey. As mentioned, he's been a starter ever since he came here to Xavier. We had mentioned earlier the sixth season for Bob Stock at Xavier. It's really the fifth season. And after the first year, he brought Jenkins, Bailey, Fleming, into the fold along with Shimko. And they are the four that have really molded the rise of uh, basketball success for the Xavier Muskie. 116 remains. And we're tied at 51-51. 
51, and we'll keep it right here. Well, Xavier worked, what, about a minute and a half off the clock there, something like that, took it down? Yeah, the last time out, we had over three minutes to go. There wasn't really a delay either. They were just looking for an easy layup there, which Jenkins thought he had, and uh, although he didn't get the hoop, he is going to go to the line, and the way they've been shooting the free throws in the second half, we figure that Xavier's going to take some kind of lead when we get back to play. I may be wrong, but I don't believe Xavier's missed a free throw in the second half. Ohio State has missed one from Tony Campbell. Well, the game at the half was a slight edge to Xavier, 30 to 28. But now, with a score 51-51, Xavier's Jeff Jenkins is at the free throw line with 1.16 to go. I think he's shooting a one and one. I don't think they called it a two-shot foul because the foul was called on Hobson for reaching in. If he doesn't hit both these free throws, then you got to wonder what's Ohio State going to do on the offense. Will they come down and show the patience that Xavier just did? Now well, we have an interesting scoreboard here. We get all sorts of information, points and rebounds, team fouls, personal fouls, but we don't get timeouts left, which is a very important factor right now. Jenkins at the line. By the way, that foul on Hobson, his fourth of the game. So Hobson and Campbell are both playing with four fouls, as is Dexter Bailey of Xavier. Jenkins, 26 points in the game. Free throw, he got it. Oh, boy. What a game he's having. Muskies were shooting 92% from the line before that shot. You could probably up that by one. They were four of seven at the charity stripe in the first half. Jenkins will try to put his Xavier team up by two with 1.16 remaining. And he does. Well, he wasn't even close to missing either one of those. Now, Ohio State must score to tie the game. 53-51, Xavier by two. 1.07 remaining. Shot clock, of course, is off. It does not play a factor in the final minutes of the game. Here's Troy Taylor. Now the, Bucks, the Bucks can show some patience here. We've still got a long time to play. 52 seconds remain. Taylor, double team, back outside to Stokes. Stokes to the hoop. Off to Hobson and then back outside to Stokes. Taylor now. Ohio State down by two. Stokes to the lane. Shot up and in. Oh. What a play by Ronnie Stokes to tie it at 53. 28 seconds remain. I think Xavier wants a timeout. Now they're going to go for it in the final 20 seconds. They'll try to win it here. 16 seconds remain. Ohio State can only hope for overtime. 11 seconds remain. Xavier gets the timeout. And nine seconds to go. Boy, how often do you think Ronnie Stokes practices that shot going to the lane? Somehow throw it straight up and down the well. Now well, this near capacity crowd of 9,000 plus applauding the efforts of both teams with 9-6 left on the clock. Xavier has the ball and a chance to win the game and advance in advance in NIT play. Right now you gotta try and put yourself in Clarence McGee's shoes because chances are the ball will be designed at least to get inside the Jenkins and Heck of a responsibility for that freshman coming up. One thing Ohio State can do, put pressure on the ball. Keep that ball outside and make it anything but easy to get it inside of Mr. Jenkins. Well, I really don't think Ohio State has enough time to plot any offensive strategy. What they have to do right now is just try to stop Xavier from scoring the winning hoop. Take a look right here. Here's that shot by Ronnie Stokes again. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's the kind of stuff you throw up in your driveway. Unfortunately, that thing went down. Well, Xavier has to get it in first. Boy, that was close to a five-second violation. That was close. very close. 
That referee looked like he was just about to raise his hand and give it the five-second call. Well, Elder Miller is asking for it. I tell you, he held that ball very close to five seconds and called the timeout just in time. Seconds to go. Ohio State hoping for overtime. Xavier hoping to pull it out and advance to the second round of the NIT. Last night's first round winners, Lamar by three over New Mexico at New Mexico. Notre Dame by five over Old Dominion. South Alabama by one over Florida. Tennessee Chattanooga by five over Georgia at Georgia. Tennessee by 14 over St. Peter's of New Jersey. And Southwest Louisiana by two over Utah State at Utah State. Here we go. <laughs> Nine seconds to go. And Fleming gets it in. Jenkins has it. Six seconds remain. Jenkins pushes it up, and it doesn't go. And we'll go to overtime. They're going to call a foul, John. What? I don't think so. No? I think we're going to go to overtime. No foul. Oh, that was close. Jenkins and McGee, they got locked up in that rebound battle. And with one second to go, the foul was almost called against McGee. Well, you look at that replay right there, and you're an Xavier fan, you wonder why it wasn't, but that's a tough, tough thing to put on a referee in that situation. Xavier didn't get the shot that they wanted, first of all. You don't want an off-balance shot by Jenkins from 20 feet out, even though he is a great shooter. Five minutes of overtime for the Buckeyes and the Muskies. One big, one big vacuum in here between Let's Go Bucks and Let's Go Muskies. <laughs> They'll jump it up to start the overtime. There'll be no advantage as far as an out-of-bounds call is concerned. Keep in mind now, Dexter Bailey playing in the game with four fouls. Ralph Lee on the bench with five. And the player disqualified for Ohio State is Keith Wesson. And Dennis Hobson and Tony Campbell are in the game. They both have five, four fouls on them. One more and they're dismissed. On the floor for Ohio State, Clarence McGee, Tony Campbell, Troy Taylor, Ronnie Stokes, and Dennis Hobson. And the five on the floor for the Muskies, Dick Fleming, Richard Harris, John Shimko, Jeff Jenkins, and Dexter Bailey. Fourth overtime game here for Xavier. Taylor to Hobson, and he lost the ball. He got it back, and he didn't get the layup. And the rebound to Fleming, and Xavier's got it. Big lost opportunity there, John. Ohio State should have cashed in. 441 remaining in the first overtime. The Buckeyes and the uh, Muskies tie. Here's the drive and the shot that doesn't go. Rebound battle. Campbell had it, lost it. Savior ball. Little loose balls in the end will make the difference in this one. You gotta go after them. A half a minute elapsing in overtime. Oh, Jenkins missed the shot there. Here's the shot by Fleming. It doesn't go, and the rebound. Off to Clarence McGee of Ohio State. The Buckeyes for the first lead in the OT. Let's see if they get it. Taylor from long range. No. Rebound. Loose on the deck. Who's going to get it? Possession to Xavier. And it'll be musky ball. Still no score, 55 seconds gone in the OT. You can see Jenkins grab that rebound right there. It looked like he was over the back, but no call, and Xavier will take it down. Fleming and Shimko outside. Now Shimko out to Harris. Shimko 
Low for Jenkins. Right back to Shimko. Doesn't go. Ooh, a big carom for Hobson. He went high to get it. Outlet to Taylor. Ohio State running. Troy still controls the dribble. Now brings it back outside to Ronnie Stoke. Ohio State trying to break a 53-53 tie. We're in overtime here at the Cincinnati Garden. The winning team advances. The loser goes home. It's NIT first round play. And the Buckeyes and the Muskies staging a real heart stopper here. Buckeyes going up, going up against the zone right now. 308 remaining in the overtime. Stokes from long range. Didn't go. Shimko with a rebound for Xavier. Well, it was at this point during regulation where Xavier came down and just held on to it. Ronnie Stokes basket with 32 seconds to go, tied it. And Xavier tried for the winning hoop, but a Jeff Jenkins shot missed. And at 53-53, we played two and a half minutes in overtime, and we have two and a half to go. Jenkins to the hoop. He got it. That'll give Jenkins 30 points, I believe, on the night. 55-53. Here's Troy Taylor. His shot is up, but he's fouled by Shimko. And Troy will go to the line to try to tie the game. Troy Taylor and Ronnie Stokes both have that great ability to get in there, and even if they don't get the shot, 80% of the time, they'll come away with a free throw. Now we have a Shimko's fouled out. That's his fifth of the game. We have a shared feed here with a Cincinnati television station, which means that we can uh, control the shots that we might like to have, but I wish we could get a shot of Father O'Malley down at the end of the bench for Xavier. He was down on one knee on that last play with Shimko fouling. He's doing a little overtime work, not only coaching, but also trying to talk to the Lord to see if he can't bring the Muskies to a win here. Well, if I get a line on what's happening with him, <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Troy Taylor. One-point game. Well, I tell you, we've had some clutch free throws here tonight. 2.17 remaining. Odd score right now at 55-54. Taylor again ties it at 55. Seventh time in the second half that the game has been tied. Neither team has had more than a four-point lead in the second half. Xavier led by six in the first half. Ohio State by five. 2.04 to go. Fleming. Oh, he nearly walked. Brings it back outside to Jenkins. This is McBride who's in the game for Shimko. Near steal by Taylor. Stolen by Hobson. Hobson to the hoop and he stops it home. Buckeyes lead by two. Hobson with 14 in the game. Vic Fleming from long range, ties it up. I'll tell you, any, any little edge that a team gets, they're converting it. Oh, and a heart stopper here at the Cincinnati Garden. The Buckeyes for the lead. 121 remains. Here's a drive by Troy Taylor. He backs away, takes it to the hoop, puts it up, and he doesn't get it. Loose on the deck and picked up by Harris. It was a good idea by Troy, good idea, it just didn't work for him. Xavier with 59 seconds remaining, trying for the lead in OT. Fleming outside to Jeff Jenkins. This is McBride. Now Dexter Bailey again with Campbell on him. Both players have four fouls. 42 seconds remain. First overtime here. McBride to Bailey. Campbell almost fouled. Bailey double teamed and he gets it off to Fleming. 28 seconds remain. Fleming against Campbell. Campbell fouls and is out of the game. You know, John, that almost looked like it was designed. I don't think Ohio State wanted Xavier to have the last shot in this ball game. No matter what happens right now at the free throw line, I think Ohio State wants to control their own fate at the other end. Well, they'll do it 
without the services of their All-American leading scorer and leading rebounder, Tony Campbell. He's fouled out. You mentioned just a couple of seconds before, Tony could have been whistled on that for body contact. He wasn't, but Tony knew what he was into there. Dave Jones will come off the bench for Ohio State. Now the Buckeyes have Hobson in the game with four fouls, and they have only Curtis Wilson on the bench with any playing experience at all. Jim Honingford and Henry Grace have hardly played the entire 83-84 season. Six Fleming, 74% from the free throw line. One for three thus far at the charity stripe in the game. He'll try to put Xavier ahead with a game tied. One and one for Fleming. He got it. Boy, is he cool, huh? 23 seconds remain. 58-57. Fleming again. Didn't go. Rebound, Dave Jones. Ohio State could win the game on a last shot. 19 seconds remain, and Ohio State takes timeout. Oh, boy. First time we've been on the odd score since Xavier led. All right, here's the Hobson stump for Ohio State. Put him in the lead at that time. That's right. Dennis has played a heck of a ball game tonight. Really, you didn't know that he was a freshman. You swear he was a junior or senior the way he's been performing tonight. 16 seconds remain, and Ohio State really at this moment, although trailing by one, controls their own destiny. That they do. It's all up to them. They can win it or lose it, and they will decide which way they go. All right, George Taylor will inbound to Ronnie Stokes. The clock is winding down. Hobson to Stokes. To Taylor. Taylor to the hoop. Shot up. Doesn't go. Rebound battle. Whistle and a foul on Dexter Bailey. He's out of the game with four seconds to go. And Ohio State's at the free throw line to win the game. Oh, my goodness. A strange twist of fate that is, Con, I think. Clarence McGee will be at the free throw line. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Now, Dexter Bailey is fouled out. So Bob Stack will have to substitute for Bailey. One of the few times tonight a foul has been whistled against the defensive team on a rebound. And it comes at probably the worst time in the world for Xavier. All right, Clarence McGee. Freshman from Chicago Weber High School the line and he will shoot I believe one and one so he's got to make them both four seconds to go there's McGee it's up didn't get it Xavier fouls two seconds to go right now than Clarence McGee, but I tell you, he'll be a better person for it someday. Maybe someday before he leaves here, he'll stand at the line at the end of an NCAA title game, and maybe he'll take it the other way. Now Fleming, who just made one of two to put Xavier ahead, 58-57, is back at the free throw line, and you don't hold much chance for Ohio State right now. If Fleming makes two, it's all over. Buckeyes could have a last-second shot. That now would send the game to double overtime. And if he makes this one, 
The route's going to go off the Cincinnati Gardens here. That's it. It'll be Xavier. Advancing to the second round of the NIT. Ohio State calls timeout, but I really don't give them a whole lot of chance to get back into this one. No, you know, John, if we were still working with the three-point shot this year, that would change a lot of things, but we're not. There's no use looking back. Now, McGee has mentioned 71% from the free throw line. He had hit 20 of 28 during the regular season. Now, they're calling Xavier out. Two seconds left. Xavier really doesn't have to come out. There's a length of the floor pass. Hit the scoreboard, and it'll be Xavier's ball underneath their own basket. Well, I guess if you don't like what the scoreboard reads, you can always try and knock it down, right? Yeah. Now Dave Jones tried a length of the floor pass, and it hit the scoreboard. So it's going to be Xavier's ball underneath their own basket with still two seconds remaining. And Fleming will inbound. All they have to do is get it out, and they do. There's the horn. It's all over. Xavier has beaten Ohio State in the opening round of the NIT in overtime. The Muskies win it by three.